Shalom, good evening. It's Ruben Abramov. Yes, the Haftorah man. And I wanted to recap last Shabbat's Haftorah man in the Hampton Synagogue. It was just one of those special, special um, opportunities to share with the congregation. First, I'd like to start off by saying that my Uncle Levy was the world's most successful oriental carpet tradesman. And as a young man, a teenager, I asked him, what are some of your secrets? And he said, the first thing when I see someone, I look in their face and I say, this person is one of God's creations. And I relate to them from that perspective. And I always say, B'Shem Hashem, in the name of God. And then I go ahead with my dealings with the person. What a frame of reference. So each person in the Hampton Synagogue, I look at them and I say to myself, each person here is one of God's creations. And I relate to them soul to soul, seeking connection to God. And I asked, what are we doing here? And I hold up a sidur, and I hold up a chumash, and I say, the prayer book is the stenographer's notes of what went on historically in the temple. So, they had the sacrifices that the priests, the Kohanim, would do. The Levim, the Levites, would be singing and playing musical instruments to the Psalms, the Tehillim. Then, in the prayer book, we go to the Shema Israel, the Hero Israel, and we progress to the Torah reading. All of that was prayer in the Temple, our history. The Haftorah, the reading from the Biblical Prophets, reveals our destiny. Isaiah was the prophet of all seven of the Haftorahs from the Shiva the Nechemta, the seven weeks of comfort after Tisha B'Av. A prophet was able to understand why things happened in the past and could visualize what was going to happen in the future based on his connection to God and being revealed this information. Other people maybe would understand something. He would overstand and he could see clearly the past and the future merged in the present. It was a time of purity. It was a time of holiness. God was perceptible. Today, we have a period of time called the Hester Panin. God has hidden his face. But back in temple times, people had a, a drive. A, a, they were magnetized towards understanding the Borei Olam, the Creator. They would meditate, they would have prophecy, and they felt connected, they felt it. Today, we're going to read about the Shiva de Nechemta from the book of Isaiah, the seven weeks of comfort. He's speaking to the Jews in the Babylonian exile who were in a total upheaval. They lived in Jerusalem, these people. He, Nebuchadnezzar, and his general, Nebuchadnezzar, tore down the temple, exiling the Jews into Babylonia by the river Kfar. They lived in a settlement called Yehud, Yehudim. And he's saying to these people, you survived the destruction. We are still a community. Here's what's going to be as far as your future and destiny. So you ask yourself, why are there three weeks before the destruction commemoration memorial 
Tisha B'Av. So there are three Haftorahs beforehand. Tulasa de Faranusa, the three weeks predicting this calamity. The reason is, according to me, I made this up, you get warned once. Don't do that. The Jewish people were not behaving themselves spiritually correctly in the temple. You get a second warning. And God says, you do that again, wham! You'll be punished. And they were, severely. Okay, that's your three weeks. Parent disciplining a child. Next, why Shiva Dinachemta? It says, in order for something to become a habit, you have to repeat the behavior, the message, so that it sinks in and perception is shifted based upon reinforcement. And it says that it takes, I think I remember the number was six times, but let's just call it seven times that. You need to reinforce something. So here Isaiah is reinforcing seven times. The better days are coming. You will go back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, you will be repopulated. You will live with simcha, with joy and happiness in Jerusalem. Now think about the Shivan and Nechemta. Is it just roll forward? Chapter 54, chapter 55, chapter 56. Why? Well, in other places, let's say Hallel, when you sing these prayers from Tehillim on the holidays, or Hallel days, there are six chapters in consecutive order. Or Friday night, Kabbalat Shabbat, the welcoming of Shabbat, six chapters in consecutive order. Here, there are asynchronous, they're out of time with each other. So then, somebody must have put it into some kind of order. And here's what the Abu Raham said, is that the Shiva de Nechemta starts off, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, be comforted, be comforted, my nation, my people. They answer, what are you talking about? Azavani, you abandoned me, Jerusalem is crying. Then God comes back and says, Rani v'simchi, rejoice and be happy because I'm bringing people back. And then finally, the seventh week, sos tasis Hashem, you should be exalted and happy in God. Togel nafshi be'elohai, my nefesh, my soul will be joyful because of my relationship with God. So here, the lev of Yerushalayim, the heart of Jerusalem, is spoken about as if it's a living and breathing and existing thing. The Haftarah, as I mentioned, comes from the book of Yeshayahu. Chapter 54, Nun He. Ten psukim, short, brevity, succinct, and depth. It starts off, Rani Akara, sing Akara, O barren city of Jerusalem. Lo Yalada, you were emptied out, you were a ghost town, but watch what's going to happen. Pitzchi Rina, that break forth into singing and cry out loud. Ki Rabim B'nei Shomema, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. You are going to have a population explosion. Pasuk bet. You lived in tents in Jerusalem. Got to pull out the tent pegs and spread them out because all the people are coming back from Babylonia one day. Isaiah is forecasting, foreshadowing what's going to happen to the Jews in the Babylonian exile. And he says, you're going back to Jerusalem. And you'll need to have more space in the tents to keep everybody inside. Then, jump forward to the late 1600s in Sfat, where the Kabbalists were. So close to Jerusalem, a long way from Babylonia, but not there yet. They instituted a supplemental 
evening prayer on Friday nights called Kabbalat Shabbat. Yes, it wasn't in the Siddur from day number one. This was developed along the way, the Hebrew prayer book. And it's from the Haftarah that we sing Friday night the Kabbalat Shabbat, the welcoming of Shabbat, let's go out and let's sing praises to God. So here, Pasuk Gimel, Ki yaminu small tifrotzi. For now, you look to the right, you look to the left, and you will be spread out. Ufaratsta. The next pasuk, it continues with Kabbalat Shabbat. Ki lo tevoshi ve lo ti kol mi. Says here, ve al ti kol mi. You will no longer be busha, embarrassed. And you no longer ki call me. I'm making it up. It sounds like calamity. You will no longer be confounded. Because the shame and the embarrassment that you had, it'll be an afterthought. It'll disappear. Ki alayich osayich. Your ma- your maker is your is your husband, Jerusalem. And those people the Babylonians that ruled over you, no more. Have no fear. God is here. And just like you were an abandoned woman and short of breath, let me tell you, the better days are coming. Berega katon azavtich. Yes, I had a emotional hijacking, God is saying. However, beshetsev ketsev histarti ponai rega meimech. I got angry. I exploded. And I pushed you out. However, uvechesed olam richamtich. And with the kindness of the world, kindness, I showed you mercy. This is also the Haftarah that we read for Parshat Noach. Because it mentions, for the waters of Noah, I will never destroy the world completely again. And here's the tenth verse. Ki heharim yomushu, for the mountains may depart, they never will, as permanent as they are, and the hills be removed, but my kindness, my chesed, shall never depart from you. And my covenant of peace, will not be removed, amar merachamech, so says Adonai. So says God. Well, sounds pretty clear to me why this is one of the great Haftorahs and how the words of Isaiah were spoken to the Israelites, the Judeans, that were in the Babylonian exile, and they heard that they have something to look forward to and that we see that those words have come true and continue to unfold and that we pray that we will have a world peace a land of Israel a city of Jerusalem and a temple we pray that will be rebuilt with peacefulness and prayer and everybody must look out for each other and take care of each other in these days and have compassion and love and understanding that we're all going through a tough time, but we can help each other get through. I love you all. Shavua Tov. Thank you for listening.